This is episode number 358 of the Inner Fight Podcast. Today, we are talking about living with intensity. Welcome back to another edition of the Inner Fight Podcast, brought to you by Smith Street Paleo. My name is Mark Smith, co-host of the show, and me and Andre have sat down today. We're talking about living with intensity. No matter where you are in the world, thanks for tuning in. Let's jump into today's show. Andre, this is it. Intense show. <laughs> this is intense. It's like, <laughs> how much coffee have you it's had? Been building up four cups of coffee. Just four. <laughs> just absolutely pumped to talk about this, folks. Today we're talking all about intensity. I think, mate, one of the best places to start. When I thought about this subject, I just sort of googled intensity and what it really means because a lot of the time, mate, we get we get it in working out, and it's in all these different areas of our life, like. Yeah too intense or not intense enough so when i when i went across to the dictionary intensity number one quality of being intense i like what it says under this the pain grew in intensity (laughs) straight up and then secondly it says the measurable amount of a property such as force brightness or a or a magnetic field hydrothermal process of processes of low intensity so if we're to define it mate in your words, what would you define intensity as being? I would define intensity as being the level of effort and focus that you're putting in to a certain thing. Right. No matter which medium or area we're talking about. So d- like, I can, I can pretty much drink this bottle of Volvic water. Freaking intense. Like, <laughs> exactly. If you're watching the video, you know what we're talking about here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That was pretty good. <laughs> so it actually doesn't really matter. I think we, we, we mainly connect intensity with sports. Right. But we forget all the other areas of life and or the actions that we do that can be super intense, basically. Yeah. Um, and that's really, I mean, that's, I, I like the way that you've put it there, probably in a little bit more plain and simple English than, than, than the dictionary puts it. It's no matter what medium or area of life we're talking about. So like we said, drinking a bottle of water, I mean, it's, it's in absolutely everything. We can be intense or we can be not intense, yeah. right? Now, it's funny because what's our definition of CrossFit? High intensity, functional movement, constantly varied. Constantly varied. Not so exactly that order. What, but is, what is it? Yeah, let's get it right. Constantly varied. Constantly high varied. High intensity, functional movements. High intensity, functional movements. So if you look back to, to sort of how they define CrossFit, we're looking for in CrossFit for high intensity. So how do we... Where do we bring intensity? Let, let's start talking. We move into life in, in a second, but let's yep. st- start talking about sort of a little bit of our bread and butter. How should we apply or how should we approach intensity in CrossFit? So let's start by how to say how CrossFit actually defines intensity. Because yeah, um, that's a very CrossFit, nice they, um, they say that intensity is equal to the average power that you put out. So that's force times distance divided by time right so it's basically your power output intensity right. equals power intensity equals power right exactly um so basically in other words how they put it is how much real work you put in over how long of a time period basically um so so the, how, and how would in that in that situation mate how do you define real work so that's the load and the power, or that's the load. How much load can you move over a certain time and how far are you moving? So it can be your body weight. It can be a 100 kilo back squat. Right. It doesn't really matter. Right. Um, and it basically all fits into this equation, which is super simple. Yeah. Now, where you have to be really careful with intensity is how to apply it exactly. Right. Over which movements. And, and I think that... That whole thing comes down to the coach. Right. You know, making sure that each client is applying intensity to the right movements and to the right s- scalability of the workout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think that's one of the... But, mate, I want to just rewind a little bit. And so we, we defined sort of... Well, well, part of the definition is moving load. Mm-hmm. Now, if you say to me, um, I've got a heavy load here... Yeah, I am, I immediately think that you you're carrying something heavy. Yeah, 
But this is not really the case, right? The, the load in the first instance is actually our body weight. Yeah. So we can create intensity by not loading our body with any more than, this is going to get confusing, than our body is already loaded with, our body weight. So we don't actually need to, so if we're moving large loads, long distances, in, in the first instance, that could be our body or, yeah. or, or defined distances, right? Because yeah. that, that's our work capacity. Exactly. So I think that's probably where people get confused Agree. most of the time because people will say, I can only have a super intense workout if I'm lifting a, let's just throw it out there, 50 kilo barbell. Yeah. So how do we put all that together then? It just comes down to understanding that equation, like that it's not about a high-intensity workout could easily be moving heavy load over either a short or longer period of time. Right. Like, and it can also be you moving a super light load, such as just your body weight. Yeah. Um, and I think most people get confused by only thinking high-intensity is, is just Fran or, you know, yeah. a 400-meter yeah. sprint yeah. or... Those kind of things, those short duration, like super out of breath yeah. kind of workouts. But, yeah. but really, high intensity could simply also be a longer, longer effort, a longer yeah. workout. Because yeah. um, the intensity is different, but it's still high. If yeah. we put it into the equation, it'll probably give something around the same. Yeah. So l- let's take it. I mean, if, if, if you say intensity of CrossFit is equal to average power, force times distance over time, if we still... If we took the force that we're moving, and that would be our body weight, say it's 100 kilos, times it by a distance of, of one kilometer over the time it took us to do it, we now find out the average power. Yeah. So if we use that calcul- that equation, we can actually find out that running, for example, running one kilometer at a certain speed and a certain body weight would could be the same power therefore the same intensity as someone lifting a barbell X amount of times. Exactly. Is anyone confused yet? <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, this, this is something that's, that's really important. And I want to go back over that equation again because you, you said it going forwards. I reverse engineered it. Now let's say it going forwards again. So intensity in CrossFit is equal to average power. Yeah. So what we're looking at is the power output. How we calculate the power output is the force that yep. we're applying times by the distance divided by the time. Yep. So that's basically, so folks that got a bit confused there, we slow that down. That's exactly how we create the power. So we can always figure out the force. We can always figure out the distance that it's moving. And we always, well, most of the time, and this is, I think this is one of the most beautiful things about CrossFit is pretty much everything is related to time. Yeah. Pretty much. It's everything. measurable. It's, it's measurable. I mean, what do they say in the, le- in the level one? You'll have to help measurable, me Measurable, repeatable, uh, and... But they also say on time, so it's a time-specific, fa- ta- uh, time-specific workout or a task-specific pers- workout. However, it, both of them are related to the clock. The yeah. clock always comes into play. So either you do something for time yeah. or you complete a task i think that's basically the way that, that that they put it forward yeah so we could talk about an amrap 10 minutes yep. or complete three rounds of whatever for, for time yeah yeah so it's they're they're the two ways but either way in each way if i complete five rounds i'm going to do it in a time so i'm going to have a specific time and if i also do a 10 minute amrap then my time my force time distance over time my time is the 10 minutes that it's that i've done the amrap for yeah. so and i think that's where we're, we're we're very good within crossfit or crossfit's very good in in making these things measurable and therefore having the ability to calculate how much intensity we're creating in a single workout yeah I think what's so cool about CrossFit is that we can sort of all get a similar stimulus from the same workout. Right. Even, even though that we might have, you know, older people or younger people or out of yep. shape people or great shape people. Um, and, and I think that's what really makes the sport so unique. And that's, what, that's where I wanted to go to, mate. So if we take something simple like a squat yep. and then we take another simple time domain like Tabata, 
20 on, 10 off. Yeah. Who cares, four rounds or eight rounds, so long as you and I are doing the same. I could do air squats, and based on the number of air squats that I was able to do in that time, I could actually be creating the same intensity as you're creating with a 60 kilo barbell on your back. Yeah. So this is something that's, that's actually super beautiful, like you say, about about what we do, about using CrossFit, because it's super easy to measure the intensity, and we can both get a super good workout at exactly the same time, yeah. but you're lifting a barbell, and I'm just going crazy doing my air squats. Yeah, and I think, you know, intensity is, is, is one of those big things that creates a lot of controversy in, in, in the sport of CrossFit, and, like, a lot of, it, it ignites that, you know, battle between, like, all the CrossFit haters and disbelievers. <laughs> There's because, none of those, man. Because they equal this intensity to injuries. Um, well, and that's where I want to come to, yeah. So how do, we, how do we avoid that? By having sound and efficient and, and, and safe movements, basically. Right. Which comes down to how well, I would say, both the coach and the athlete is is acting and and as focused basically like right. the coach can can run around and help everyone and everyone can be moving sound and perfect in a warm-up yeah but if, if there's no focus as soon as the workout goes and and they lose it it's it's very difficult as a coach to to, to always handle it so everyone is responsible but it is in the end game yeah both people that that need to be like taking responsibility responsibility f- yeah for these things let's talk about some common mistakes in workouts let, let, let's take something like fran very simple very, very simple 21 15 9 thrusters and pull-ups yeah average time it should take someone to do that mate average i would say about five minutes five minutes i think around so, yeah. five minutes like Top. for an average nine to five i yep. remember comes four or five times a week right so if you're and what should you be feeling at the end of that you should be completely destroyed. Right. You should be doing it at a rep scheme where potentially you should be close to being unbroken or 100% unbroken. Right. So that you get that proper intensity. Right. Now, Here we go. <laughs> where the big problem is, is that people, they look at that workout as yep. like, thrusters at 42 and a half kilos or 95 yeah. pounds. Yeah. That's, too, that's easy. That's I can easy. E- I can easily do that. Right. The problem is... You can't do that twenty one fifty nine super fast with a bunch of pull ups in between, right? And then the whole workout kind of loses its intensity. Yeah, yeah. And then it takes you eight or nine minutes because you've had to. I think you said something really cool there, especially for that workout, mate. Like every single like the twenty one thrusters, the twenty one pull ups, the fifteen thrusters, the fifteen pull ups, the nine thrusters, the nine pull ups should be all unbroken reps. You should not be letting go of a the barbell. Or B, the pull-up bar. Maybe your maybe your pull-ups are not quite there and you can still complete this workout in five minutes. So you might break your pull-ups up into two or three sets. Yeah. Seven, 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 five, five. And then so five, five, five and three, three, three. Something like that. But generally, you would be trying to... You'd be looking to do something unbroken. If you did that, you would create intensity. That would be, like you say, a super intense workout. But what do we see, mate? We see exactly what you said, 42 kilos, this is 95 pounds, I can, I can back squat 120, so I can definitely thrust a 42, <laughs> and people taking eight or nine minutes, and actually not being completely lights out, not being, you know, and not that sore is always a good measure, but I remember, I remember when, like, I think the last time I did, Fran, the next day, I was incredibly sore. Yeah. And all I all I'd done is is forty five thrusters at ninety five pounds. Yeah. And I think when I did it, I, I had a back squat of one hundred eighty kilos, something like that. So I was strong, but because of the intensity, I was absolutely blown apart. I mean, let's take an example. Last week or two weeks ago, when we had the event here in the gym, right? This is a good example. Where two people had to share hundred thrusters at ninety five pounds for the guys, sixty five mm-hmm. for the girls. I've been doing thrusters at high intensity every single week ever since the open. Yeah. And I was completely destroyed the day after. Really? I only did 65 or 70 of those thrusters. So Natalie stitched you up. <laughs> she set me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, that's a great example. Like, yeah. Even if 
you're taking training really serious and you, you're used to work at that intensity. Yeah. If you go ham, yeah. like balls to the wall crazy, yeah. you will be wrecked. Like if you're finishing the workout and you, cons- you ask right after, what is the finisher? Yeah. <laughs> then I will <laughs> punch you in the face. <laughs> Hey, you've become very aggressive since you started working here. I'm not sure if that's what we promote. But, I mean, this this is the thing. So let's look at it. Let's look at it a little bit more proactively. They're the, they're the results of what will happen to you if you do it wrong. Here's how you can do it right. So if you're unsure, so there's a scaling on the board for Fran. 42 pounds, regular pull-ups. Uh, 42 kilos. Thank you. Sorry, boss. Regular pull-ups. The next scale down, for, this is for guys, would be something like 30 kilos yeah. and potentially jumping pull-ups. Possibly a good yeah. scale. Yeah, it could be, yeah. Same rep scheme, 21, 15, get, 9, get intensity 21, 15, with that 9. Movement, it's safe. Get yeah. great intensity, you know, because you can't, if you can't do 10 decent unbroken kipping pull-ups there's a pretty good chance that you're not going to get through 45 pull-ups no. within five minutes never mind the thrusters so that would be a nice scale and then the la- a sort of entry option if, if you've not been doing crossfit for too long could be something like just the barbell or f- a 15 kilo barbell thruster and some really nicely modified ring rows. Yeah. Still with good form, but feet super far back, so it's 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 quite an upright movement. And you're just pulling that the, that uh, so ring. So you can keep that speed and intensity. So you can keep the speed and intensity. You're going to be in a little bit more of a of, of, of a solid hollow position. So we're not going to be as, we're not going to be quite as loose as you might see in a kipping pull up. But you're going to keep it. Now what happens is you go through. You've picked your scale. They're, they're your scales. You go through. Do you, do you think that on that bottom scale or the, the entry scale, how's someone going to feel if they finish that workout in three to four minutes? They should be feeling Smart. really smashed. Yeah. And, um, and that's, that's what it's all about. Yeah. And it's just about leaving the ego at the door. Like, yeah. like it doesn't matter if you're not ready for, for that intensity at 42 kilos and pull-ups. Then yeah. it's okay to go lower. It doesn't mean you did an easier workout. Yeah. Like quite the opposite, actually. Quite the opposite, <laughs> exactly. So, so I mean, that's that's really the way, and they're gonna have achieved decent intensity within that workout. They, you know, and then they're gonna th- if if they felt it a little bit easy, then hands up, we got the scaling a little bit wrong. Yeah. It took you, you know, if you've just walked into the gym, if if you can legitimately do forty five thrusters and forty five decent ring rows in sub three minutes, I I would genuinely be quite surprised yeah and you probably lied about your athletic background and the fact that you were at the crossfit games last year <laughs> i don't think people in the gym are decently yeah. really decent at this and like yeah or like we also try to guide them as good as we can and absolutely like no one will look weirdly at somebody if they do empty barbell thrusters you know yeah like, <laughs> nobody actually cares yeah well You'll that's just do your own thing yeah and that's the thing isn't it but the next step is is if you if you weren't I try and stay away from the, the, the term sort of wanting to die after you've done your twenty one fifteen nine, you know, but if if you were still if you found that a little bit too easy and not so intense, then yeah, we got the scaling wrong for you and next time you should go up to, for example, that thirty kilo bar and, and maybe your jumping pull ups. It really what I want to come round to is that's a workout where we're searching for that intensity. We want you to work out anywhere around the five-minute mark or less. Yes. We want it to be super intense. We want it to burn. We want you in the nicest possible way to feel sore the next day. That's when we're trying to create maximal intensity. Let's talk about the flip side of the coin, mate, where we want less intensity in, in CrossFit. And then we're going to move over into life. So... When we want less intensity, like that, that's a big misunderstanding with CrossFit. Everyone thinks it's only high intensity. We also do, like if you go to CrossFit.com, like it's probably going to be like five times five back squats yeah. with three minutes rest in between. Yeah. That's not quite high intensity. Right. Um, like it's high effort yeah. in the set. But the, the heart rate will be low. There will be plenty of time to recover and all those kind of things. Yeah. So we, we try to touch, we, you know, we try to tap into all the different like – metabolic stimulus like we try to tap into all the energy systems and all energy systems are fed off 
different um, type of workouts. Yeah. We want the sprints. We want a little bit longer. We want the super long workouts. We want strength on the high rep, on the low reps, and everything basically. So, so I think what's important is that is that we understand that that's it doesn't always have to be intense. Yeah. And that it's okay when it's not intense. You still had a good workout. Right. Um, yeah. So and I think that comes in the within, and I understand that high intensity is in the definition of CrossFit, but so is constantly varied. Yeah. So you know, I I actually to some in, to some extent I disagree with their their whole definition of what it should be like having high intensity in there every single time like massively support constantly varied massively support functional movements but i i think as well that people like could you have done the, the workout that you spoke about the couples couplet could you have done it at that intensity the next day no so did you do some did you do some form of workout yeah yep. was it varied from what you did the day before yeah yep w- were you able to perform at a high intensity Ideally, well, not really. I probably was, but I, I, I didn't. But it would have been ideally, something yeah, very exactly. different, right? Exactly. It wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have done any squats or presses or yeah. those kind of things. Yeah. So I think I think that's one one of the biggest things, sort of, to for people to take away is that we're trying to get intensity. We want people to live with intensity in the gym, but there are certain times where we're trying to create it over three minutes. There's certain times where we're trying to create it over five minutes. There's actually certain times where we're trying to create it over an hour. You do a one-hour row, max effort, and you do it properly, and tell me that it wasn't high intensity. <laughs> if I ask you to do a 40-minute recovery row, so I would take your, your, your one-hour row time, and I would add maybe let you go 20 to 30% slower, yeah. that's obviously not at high intensity. But, but that's just as important. But it's just as important. I heard... Ben Bercheron, I think he had this quote where he said that for every super high intensity and tough workout you have, you need to match that with one easy sessions or one wow. recovery session. So if you just did friend, yeah. your PM session should maybe be like super low heart rate, aerobic capacity work or some sort of recovery session. Or, or maybe something, yeah. Maybe. Or gymnastics. or any, It could be something completely different. Yeah, um, just a little bit less actual intensity yeah. and, and, and where you feel it. I think another good example that we've used recently in, in the gym is where we put the challenge out for people to do 100 unbroken wall balls. Yeah. Just 100. We know that Karen's 150 and we know that that hurts a damn lot when, 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 you, when you're going pretty hard out because you're going to finish it super fast. Yeah. And we scaled everyone down. Like people that thought, yeah, I can do a 20-pound ball. We're like, yep, you're doing a 14-pound ball. We're going to do this again. It actually needs to come up again. You know, and then, then you'll do the 20. I think 80% of people came the next day and went, yeah, my legs are sore. Yeah. So they created some, some really good intensity there. And, and what is cool with those kind of things, and like with Fran, like, like we spoke about, is that it's, it's scalable. Like right. or it's, it's immeasurable, which means that if you did it on 14-pound ball and it fell easy, well, no problem. In two weeks, yep. you'll do it on 20 pounds. Yeah. And you'll see how that feels. If yeah. that feels good, you try 30 pounds. Yeah. yeah. If that feels good, I'll grab your sandbag. <laughs> <laughs> sandbag wall balls, eh? <laughs> yeah. Actually, nah. When we, uh, I remember when Karen was first in the open when there was 150 wall balls and it was a 20 pound ball and no one had 20 pound balls except the Americans. Uh. So all we had was kilo kilo med balls the hard ones Oof. and we had eight kilos and 10 kilos and the translation to 20 pounds is nine kilos so we took an eight kilo ball got two fractionals <laughs> half on this end half on this end and wrapped it up with uh, with tape with Oof. masking tape and did 150 wall balls with that that's freaking old school it was a little bit old school i'm not sure if jonesy remembers that i think it was the year before he came but, uh, yeah, we had no option. And because you're doing it against the wall and the metal plates are on it, you had to shoot it straight every single time. So people that complain that the big Dynamax med balls are not quite round. Relax. Out. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's a little bit of a, a, a chat about how we create intensity and how we live with intensity within the gym. Mate, we've got about 15 minutes left. Let's digress. Let's get out from the gym. 
What do we think about living with intensity in other parts of life? Are we doing it? What does it mean? What's it all about? How the hell do we measure that? It's easy in the gym because we take our equation, average power, force times distance over time. How do we live with intensity and how much intensity do we live with outside of the gym? I think the same effort you put into your training with full intensity, you should match that intensity with everything else you do. So if that's being with your girlfriend, like when I say max intensity, I mean just being there, (laughs) being present, 100%. Like when you're training, you're 100% there. You're not on your phone. You're not doing all kind of other things. You're there 100%. When yeah. you're, and that's intensity to me. Like it's being focused and present. It's when you're, you know, with your kids, playing with them, you're not at work, you're not answering emails, you're there. Like for me, that's intense. Yeah. Like when we're talking right now on this podcast, that's, that's all we do. Yeah. Like we're here 100%. Yeah. And that, I, for me, that's also intensity. Yeah. It, do, you, do you think, do you think we're, we're moving into more of a, I, I, I guess a distracted society and because we're distracted we're able for to sure. be less intense for sure like we're so distracted by our phones our laptops everything because everything is so also it's easy to do everything at the same time yeah and not really yeah because we can't yeah. do everything at the same time but we think we can yeah so we're actually doing nothing I have this argument with Holly the whole time um, like <laughs> like when you first you know told me about we're gonna do this podcast about high intensity or living with intensity the yeah. first thing that came to mind was jason kalipa <laughs> yeah we uh we had the pleasure of having jason on the show in podcast 300 oh you it got it i was just about to search to see which one it was that was 300 if you haven't listened to that show yeah and you need to feel motivated and want to smash your life yeah then you should definitely go listen to that one like yeah. he's just the definition of intensity yeah he has this um this approach called the, the AMRAP mentality. And that's, that's kind of what, what I said before is that it's as many reps as possible for him and everything he does. So yeah. when he's at work, yeah. he's just AMRAPing work. Yeah. He, he doesn't worry about training. He doesn't worry about you know, his family. Yeah. When he's with his family, he doesn't give a damn about you know, work or training, yeah. et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So he's just maximizing his effort in everything you do. Yeah, I, um, think, I think that's, yeah, that's definitely a podcast. Hop over and listen to Podcast 300. That's definitely, if you missed it, if you're a new listener, thanks for being a new listener. I hope you guys like our new artwork, by the way. No one's given us any feedback yeah, on the no, artwork I've yet. been flexing <laughs> so hard on that picture. Is, it, is that the right picture or is that the Photoshop that's picture? That's the right picture. Uh, we had a little... <laughs> A little bit of a good joke with Andre with uh, with the new artwork for the podcast that we put together where Val managed to uh, suck a little bit of his bicep off. They literally looked like <laughs> your arms. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, that's all good. I'm all about the leg muscles these days. I know. It's, it's a little bit different. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, living it with Three, intensity. 300. That was yeah. it. Jason Kalipa. You, I mean, mate, you, with him, we'd ask him a question and he'd be like, <laughs> yeah. boom. Like, <laughs> it's like, I thought he was, we did that one on Skype, didn't we? I thought he was literally going to jump out the screen yeah. and just absolutely go for us on it. The most aggressive body language I've ever seen. You said it, didn't you? You, you hopped over to his, uh, to his website there yep. as well. And it, it's actually quite interesting. Most people, as, as a preview on their website, they'll have a, a video of some, and there'll be some words or some subtitles. Yep. The only the thing, like, I don't even know what the soundtrack was because you see this guy and his body language is just, it's, it's just on and ev- in every situation. Yep. And it had, him, it had him teaching, like, I don't know what it was, Zumba. High knees or something. High <laughs> knees to, like, 200 people in a park. And he's just so completely yeah. all in, so energetic. Like yeah. that's that's so in- like that's the intensity. It's also just being energetic in general. Yeah, exactly. What, mate? When I think you've popped up on, on on a couple of things there that I want to I want to use the, the rest of the show to sort of close in on things like when you're with your family. You know, I believe that devices are distracting us. They're distracting us a lot. For sure, I, I I'm as guilty as anyone else you know you sort of you go to have a coffee and you're like yeah i'll I'll go and have a coffee and i'll read this book and literally sometimes i'm doing trying to do five different things on my phone and i forget what i actually picked it up for and it's the most infuriating thing ever what hacks have you found useful for dismissing those distractions 
I mean, there's simple things as putting your phone on flight mode. Right. I don't. I don't like doing that in general because right. I worry too much about like my family or yeah. if anything happens, you know, like you got to be ready to receive a phone call. Yeah. But it just takes discipline to just leave it and don't look at it. And it, it is super, super difficult yeah. um, because there is so many things. I also think it just comes down to like if you have a super busy schedule, then you have to decide how much time do you want to waste on scrolling through Instagram yeah. Or Facebook. Right. <laughs> what value does that actually bring you? And, yeah. You know, to some people, it might bring them lots of value. For sure. It yeah. might be that might be connect. Their job. Yeah, it might be their job. It might yep. be for educational reasons or yeah. whatever it might be. Yeah. For many of us, it's simply just distraction. Yeah. And we're not getting anything done. And I'm talking main, mainly about, you know, when you are with another person. Right. Like being 100% and not, t- you know, texting to a lot of other people or. You know, just scrolling for Instagram. Because yeah. you think you're listening 100% to what that person is saying. You're not. But you're actually not. Yeah. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that's scientifically proven that you can't do, you know, 100% two you things at the same time. It's very difficult to write a very good email or to write a nice comment on someone's Instagram and, and have an intense conversation yeah. at the same time, isn't it? I mean, it, I even, man, I, fi- I find that even, to be honest, and, 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 and this is one of the things, like, when we're talking here, and, and, and we're sort of rolling and everything's going good, I'm, I'm all good, but then sort of when I'm checking the notes or when I'm checking how much time we've gone or are the volumes right, sometimes we also lose different different bits of the conversation. Yeah. So it's absolutely right. It's an interesting thing about flight mode. See, my phone's going off there again. It's an interesting thing about flight mode, though, mate, because I was pretty much the same. I was like, I'm a bit scared to put my phone on flight mode. And, you know, but now literally by 8 o'clock every evening, my phone's on flight mode. Actually, leave the phone. I started this about two or three months ago, just not even having the phone in my bedroom. So I, as soon as I go upstairs, which I normally go upstairs, have a shower, 7.30, 8 o'clock. Yes, very early. Don't let that worry you. I do it <laughs> intensely. You know, I sleep with intensity. And I just leave it downstairs so I don't need to put it on flight mode anymore it's downstairs it's on silent and it doesn't bother me but now everyone in the podcast who's listening right now is just like what do you do with alarm yeah what do I do with the alarm old school I actually have a second phone by my bed which is just for an alarm so so go buy another phone or just buy an alarm I'd buy an old school alarm mate <laughs> I just I just had an old phone and I, I like the noise of the phone yep. uh, the alarm phone or the phone alarm and there that was that was actually the easiest thing to do yeah and talk about I mean okay there's loads of other benefits to it that I, that I found but I don't know I I sort of I was very similar to you or oh, what happens if in the middle of the night something you know, something bad, God forbid, happened to my parents. They live in Europe, you know. And then I was like... And that shit could happen. It can happen, Trust mate. Me. But I was almost like, well, what can I do about it? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's, it is a little bit... And I also think... I mean, I went to boarding school for 10 years and I didn't have email. I didn't have a phone. We used to correspond by letters, you know, and I know that sounds a bit old school, but How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we in my first, mate, true story. My first school in my in my prep school, where I was for five years, I wasn't allowed to use a phone at all. I was only allowed to use a phone in during the Gulf War. Mate, my, did they even have phones back then? <laughs> yeah, they had phones. <laughs> in during the Gulf War, my parents were allowed to call me like once every two weeks just to tell me that they hadn't been blown up. That's a true story because the war was on and they were here in Dubai and I was back in the UK at school and I think they thought that I was worried about them, but I actually, I was too young to know what a war was. And um, yeah, and they used to call me and then when I was in senior school, there was, there was a phone booth, but you weren't really allowed to use it. You're allowed to use it like once a week. So, you know, what did we do back then? And I know there's a load of benefits to, to technology, but you know, trying to bring this back into, into intensity, at least during those times, We'd, we'd sit down and we'd be absolutely all in, you know? And I think that's, I really think, I, I totally agree with you, mate. It's, you know, if, you're, if you've decided to go out for, for, for breakfast with, with your wife or you've decided to take your daughter to, to, to the park, like, you've made such a commitment that deserves absolutely everything you've got. Yeah. I sadly find that some of the only times that people don't get distracted... Is, is sort of in the work boardroom 
you know, where they actually, they, they literally, because there's a board meeting going on. They're forced or meeting, to. They're, they're forced to. Yeah. You know, so you're almost prioritizing your, your, your work over your, in that, in that example, your daughter. Yeah. You know, and it's like, oh yeah, she's playing on the swings and I'm, I'm just flipping through whatever. Yeah. You know? I, I think the main solution to, to this big problem is something you introduced me to when I came here. Yeah. Not something you invented, but no. <laughs> simply just using a calendar yeah. and, you know, like making sure that, you know, when you book a week ahead or however you do it. Yeah. You go, you put in everything that's super important. You yep. make sure you've covered everything in that week, like time with your daughter, you know, time at work, training, whatever else is important for you. Yeah. And once that is in the calendar, you know that you've covered all areas. Got it. So when you're training, yeah. you don't need to worry about, you know, work because you know the work is already booked in. Yep. So you don't need to be on your phone answering emails or whatever because you're going to be at work later yeah. and you're going to take care of that. Yeah. You know after work you're going to be home yeah. and then it's home time and then yeah. it's time with your family. And I, that for me made a massive difference and yeah. like I got so much more work done instead of trying to do all kind of things at the same time. Yeah, absolutely. And um, that's I mean, a massive mate, game changer. Yeah, that's something that I, I guess I've done <coughs> for an incredibly long time and it goes within sort of my life priorities, which is my family, my health, and then my work. And so every week I'll, and you know, a lot of people laugh at it and Holly still kind of laughs, but I know she, she really appreciates it. You know, I, I think I started it about 10 or 12 years ago when I was in Adidas and I literally just sat down and I broke, I, I took a spreadsheet and I broke it down and I was like, this is how much time I'm going to spend and this is how it's going to go. And every week, from then on, I sit down a week in advance, and the first thing I'll put in there is 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 time that I'm going to spend with Holly. Yeah, you know, and the, <laughs> this is even more geeky is that she has a color in my calendar, so her color is green, so I can always see how much green I've got. It's 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 time with her. It's booked time with her, yeah. and of course, I don't make it super super anal. I uh, we, you know dinner tonight green. You know, if if it's if it's a date, then it's green. But and then you put in your health stuff. And yeah. then you start to build it so that everything you do, you know in that particular moment that that's the time for that and nothing can, can take over it. Yeah. And that's why a lot of people will, will sort of, I mean, and it, it's the same for a lot of us. People will say, oh, I need to see you tomorrow. And a lot of people turn around and say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Like, you know, I'm not the busiest guy in the world and yeah, all of this, but I sort of have a lot of stuff that's locked in that's, that's unnegotiable. And when I'm doing that, that's where intensity comes from. That's where being in that moment actually comes from. So yeah. I think people can, I think there's a few really simple hacks. Yeah. We established in the first half of the show that, yep, it's super easy to get intensity in the workout. We can teach you how to scale stuff. We can use CrossFit's equation. You know, intensity in CrossFit is equal to average power, which is force times distance over time. We got that one down pat, but it's a little bit harder to measure intensity in time with family yeah like but i think if you have less distractions in the time that you have with your family then you are actually going to be a lot more intense aren't you for sure because i mean when that when the conversation maybe slows down what's the first thing we do we pick up our phones to check what to check honestly to check what yeah like yeah i I catch myself checking my phone 100 times a day probably yeah and i there's nothing new on instagram feed Nothing. Like, and I check Insta stories for, like, just, you know, pictures of my friends drinking coffee or yeah. working out. But Super like, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't actually teach us anything. Yeah. I think it's okay to get entertainment throughout the day. For like, sure. it's not like you should have to be in, like, a military camp where you can't do anything Absolutely. in your life. But yeah. Yeah. know the time and place for each thing. If we understand that the phones is causing us a problem, there's, there's actually an app. We discussed it on the radio show the other week. I can't actually remember it off my head there's an app which will tell you exactly how much time you spend doing absolutely everything on your phone as well so how much you know basically how much time you're in each of your app what's it say it's called life cycle life cycle track your time automatically so if you want to go and check that out go and get life cycle and it basically it takes two or three days to collate all the data it can tell you how much time you spend going home, it, but 
it, it can tell you how much time you spend working out. It kind of knows somehow or it has an algorithm set up in your phone and absolutely knows. But if you want to just use it to see how much you're distracted, then it is actually super good. So it'll tell you how much time you're spending on Instagram, Facebook a day. Another simple thing on the iPhone is you can go and look at uh, where you spend your battery. It'll yeah. tell you the percentage of your battery. So maybe that's a little bit of a digression onto the distractions of technology and iPhone. But I think living with intensity is not only in the gym, it's in life as well. Like how full on are you with someone when, when you're doing something? And also, I also see that like if I'm super fired up to meet someone, like I can get that meeting done within 15 or 20 minutes. If, yeah. it's, if it's full on intense, it's bang, it's this. Obviously, you can't, you can't rush a thought process or a decision-making yeah. process. But if you're just absolutely there and you're in the moment, meetings also get done a lot faster. Yeah. And if you show up intense, you can be sure that they will either have to respond intense or yeah. leave. <laughs> like, I think very it's very true. difficult if, if one person is super intense in a conversation and the other one is just not. Like, yeah. it, often it will encourage the other person to, to get intense. This, I, isn't, this bit isn't in the show notes, but... Aside from Jason Kalipa, two or three of the most intense people that you, maybe public figures or famous people that you know that people can go and have a look at for intensity? If it's not Jason Kalipa that pops in my head, and this is not a public figure either. Yeah. But you are freaking <laughs> one of the most intense people that I know. I'm not intense, I'm relaxed, mate. And I think that most people that come to Inner Fight would agree on that. So <laughs> hop over to your page. I'm not I'm not a public figure. If not, um Tony Robbins, super intense guy. Big guy, big presence. Yes. Just loads True. of loads of uh, prowess and I guess Gary Vaynerchuk, if people like Gary V, he's yeah. pretty intense. He's literally doing taking a selfie like this, like he's yeah. almost got his face in his iPhone. I guess I guess a lot of athletes as well, sort of top top level athletes, the ones that are at the top of their game. I guess one one person who's a top level athlete, like someone like Roger Federer, probably the greatest tennis player of all time, he you wouldn't really you don't get a feeling that but he's a super also, intense guy. No, it depends on like their you know, their appearance. Yeah. Like if you're freaking loud, yeah, often, row. yeah, like often we would think they're super intense. And yeah, they maybe are, but Roger Federer might super as well relaxed. be super intense. Yeah. But I guess he he's a great example of key. yeah of someone you don't get to be the best tennis player of all time, arguably with Nadal, or by not being intense in a lot of areas of no. your life. I guess it's it's a little bit more. He's he's managed throughout his career to to sort of give off this super cool relaxed guy even when he walks on the court he's got very positive body language yeah. but he's not so i think nadal's probably a little bit more intense looking yeah. and he also across. just looks more intense looks more intense. i think we can you know we often assume that people are super intense based on how they look yeah like yeah. if you show up in a tank top yeah like you just worked out yeah and you're fired up like yeah. obviously you'll be super intense if you yeah. show up in in a suit or a baggy t-shirt Absolutely. You, you might not give You're the a bit same. More relaxed. Yeah. Jose Mourinho, he's another one that's pretty intense. His interviews are nice and intense. <laughs> Mate, that is about enough. Living with intensity. Hopefully, people now understand intensity and working out. Hopefully, we've also sparked a little bit of a thought process to create a little bit more intensity yeah. outside of the workout zone outside of the gym and in, in different areas of your life. And, and hopefully, by th more intensity, you get more enjoyment. Hopefully. There we go. That is podcast number 358, Living with Intensity. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember, hop over, rate and review the podcast over in iTunes. Check out our sexy new logo. Tell us if you like it. Tell us if you don't. We can change it if you want. And if you do send us a review, just let us know. Winning at innerfight.com. We'd love to send you a gift from Smith Street Paleo. If you do have any questions, winning at innerfight.com. We'd love to hear from you. Even podcast titles or people you think we would be interested in interviewing. We've got listener Q&As coming up. We've got more good guests coming up. So thank you for supporting us. Thank you for staying tuned. Until next time, take care.